thing you can do when you arrive at Basuma is simply type in a competitor's domain. You can type in any topic and we'll find you the most shared content, but you can simply type in your competitor's domain name. So let's say you're tracking McKinsey.com. We can hit search and Basuma will bring back for us the most shared content for McKinsey.com. Um, and we'll bring you back the same results. We'll show you the topic so we can show you the the title of the article they've published, um, the date it was published, and if we pick up an author's name, we'll also show you the author's name. We can then show you the number of shares it's had on the different platforms. And by default, we order by total shares, but you can refilter by uh, LinkedIn or Twitter, for example, or Facebook. So I can click Facebook here and simply reorganize uh, the list by Facebook shares. So if I'm particularly interested to see what's working for them on a particular platform, I can resort. Um, I just go back to total shares. So the first thing I do is see what's working for my competitors, what type of content, um, what um, uh, headlines are working for them, for example. I can also filter that by a date period. So I'm currently looking at the last year, but if I wanted to look at the last month, I can hit filter and I can now see what content is working from the last month. So I can see maybe what new content uh, that they're bringing out, uh, what's working for them. So I can refilter by a date uh, period. The other thing that you can do, which uh, people forget sometimes in Buzzsumo, so I just want to make it clear, you can use the OR operator, uh, which allows you to then compare multiple sites. So we can look at, say, some of the other larger consultancies, so Accenture, KPMG, or McKinsey, and we can research. And we can see that McKinsey are actually getting most of the shares. Uh, uh, and as we go down, there are a couple of others here. So we've got a KPMG article, an Accenture article. Um, and we can, say, do that even for the past week if we want, or the past 24 hours, in terms of what's working um, for our competitors. What are they focusing on? Um, in this case, I see there are three articles here by KPMG. They're all around, um, obviously, the Chief Information Officer, digital culture, technology and growth, so maybe that's where they're focusing a little at the moment. And I can see that they're getting most of their traction on LinkedIn. So I can see for KPMG, they're probably focusing a little bit more just on that technology side this week, uh, and they're getting traction on that particular platform. But if I just run back to McKinsey, I just think that um, doing a search with alternatives is quite useful because you can see a number of competitors at one time. And the other thing you can do under any search is you can click the Save Search button and you'll have a search that gets saved here on the left-hand side. So, for example, i just show you this one. I've got a little search that I've saved looking at four different SEO sites and their most shared content this week. And I find that's a good way for me to keep on top of what's happening in the SEO world. So I think it's a useful way to, to have a look at um, what competitors are doing. But if I just go back to McKinsey, if you're searching on a big site, such as uh, McKinsey's quite a large site or a competitor that has a lot of content, you could also search for a subdomain or you can search for a topic. So here, I can just search for the most shared articles on marketing on McKinsey. So I can now see these are the most shared articles about marketing on McKinsey in the last year. So I can be much more specific and I can uh, dive in and have a look at those. So you can do that. You can also search for subdomains as well. So you might have a subdomain like blog, for example, and you just want to search a particular section of a competitor's site. So that's just a, a quick way of just seeing what content is working for them. With all of the Buzzsumo searches, if you're a, a pro user, you can export the data. And it's really worth exporting the data and having a look there because we provide you with a lot more data uh, and you can get it in a, a CSV format or an Excel format. But we provide you with a lot more data than you would typically uh, get on the front page report here. So, And then you can slice and dice it. You don't need to rerun the search if you want to do more analysis. So, so you certainly do uh, export the data. So. So that's the first thing we would do is we would see you know what content's working for them. Now let me just go back and search for McKinsey. I think the second thing that it's it's worth um, 
thinking about is then who amplifies their content. So it's one thing to think about, okay, what's their most popular content? I can try to understand why it's popular. What type of themes are they they looking at? What type of content are they producing? Um, But once I've done that, I might want to look at who's amplifying it. Before I look at who's amplifying it, I just want to show you some of the reports because you can do a lot more detailed analysis uh, for McKinsey.com than I'm showing here. So if you go to the reports tab, you can run a content analysis report for any topic, but you can also run it for a domain. So I could run it for a particular domain such as McKinsey.com. And this way will get you a much better overview of their content as a whole. So I can see the precise articles being shared, but here I can see what's happening overall in terms of their content. Um, By default, we go back and search for six months of data, but um, you might um, want to change that date range and you can change it here. So you'll see in the last six months, uh, we found 174 articles. Uh, They were shared 165,000 times. On average, they're getting a large number of average shares. So on average, they're getting 93 shares. And we can see that they're getting most of their shares on LinkedIn. So that's clearly where their focus is. In terms of content types, then mainly uh, how to articles are getting more shares than others. We can look at when they publish their content. It's uh, purely Monday to Friday, as we would expect. They probably get low shares on uh, Saturday and Sunday, but they're getting a reasonable number of shares right across the week. We can look at content length, and this is another interesting one that we tend to find with Sumo that their longer form articles, the 3,000 to 10,000 word articles here, are getting more shares than their short form content. Um, so we can look at that. Um, we can look at uh, their top most shared content, but we get a lot more detail if we do that in the top content search. The other thing we can do is actually do a domain comparison. So you can get an overview for a client and uh, or for a competitor and how well they're doing. And I've pulled one up here. So I've compared two sites here. They're not necessarily you know, comparable sites, but uh, just to show you the principle. Um, with a domain comparison, you can enter two competitor domains. And we're going to extend this so you could do four or five. Um, but you can look at two different competitor domains. So I can see for Moz, they produce a lot more content uh, than McKinsey. But on average, they're getting a lot less shares. And I find the average shares just a useful benchmark. Um, it's really um, not a sort of an absolute figure, but it, it's a good way to see you know, what's the benchmark. If you're getting 100 shares and your competitor's getting 300, then you need to look at why clearly. Or if in a particular topic you're searching for the average shares of three or 400 and you're getting less, uh, again, you might want to look at it. Or equally, you might be surprised and see that you're doing relatively well. You might be getting 80 shares opposed but actually the average for other competitors is a lot lower. It's a good way, I think, of just creating a sort of benchmark data as to how well you're doing against competitors. The interesting thing about the comparison charts is we can see that Moz are getting most of their traction on Twitter, whereas clearly McKinsey are focusing on LinkedIn as their channel of choice, uh, probably because it's more B2B, for example. So you'll see quite different patterns, and that can be interesting if you're in the same area as a competitor where they're getting their traction. You can also look at content types. And again, we see big differences here. So we can see that Moz are getting most of their traction on a list post, whereas um, uh, McKinsey are getting most of their traction with how-to articles. So hopefully you can see through the content analysis reports how you can compare domains and how you can get an overview of how well um, a particular competitor is doing. So that's just by way of introduction. I'm just going to now just check um, whether there are any questions. I have to come off full screen to just check here. So let me just check. No questions so far. Do ask questions uh, as we go, um, but no questions so far. So it's good. Right, I'll move us back to full screen. So let's go back and look at McKinsey's most shared content. So I pull up their most shared content, and what I want to focus on now is, you know, what's the um, who is amplifying that content? Why is it getting amplified? Why is it getting shared so much? And as I commented at the start, there are probably two things you want to look at in terms of who's amplifying your competitors' content. They are the people who share it, 
and the people who link to it. So in the first instance, I'll just click on these sharers and we show you here the people who've shared the content on Twitter because that's publicly available, getting some of the other data is harder. Um, so I can now see the people who shared that article uh, on Twitter. So they may be useful people for me to follow or to build a list, uh, an outreach list for, so that I can see if they would then share my content, whether they're relevant people uh, and interested in what we're doing. Um, I can export this entire list here. So I found nine pages of people that share this content, I can export it into a, a spreadsheet and pull it into a CRM or other form of tool such as Buzzstream uh, if I want to do that. I can follow them directly from within Buzzsumo or if I've created a Twitter list, say it's a Twitter list of competitor amplifiers or something like that, um, I can simply add individuals to my Twitter list as well uh, and tweet to them directly. So. I think it's a really useful feature, the view sharers, because it might help you build up outreach lists of people who are already sharing similar content or competitive content. So good for you to see who's sharing it. By default, we organize this list um, by average retweets here, uh, the individual, but you might want to see who's got um, a, a larger audience. You might want to resort by followers, and so you can resort this list by followers or by their retweet ratio, their reply ratio, um, or by their page authority. So their most um, page authority uh, or domain authority for their site. So you can resort and slice and dice the list uh, to your heart's content uh, till you get uh, what you want there. So that's the first thing you do is see who's sharing uh, content. Uh, sorry, go back. The other thing you can do, and this is really useful, is you can view the backlinks. Um, now you can view these in two ways. You can simply go here and view the articles that link to that specific piece of content, or you can click up here and see the backlinks to the domain. And I'm going to, I've prepared a couple. It takes about a minute to run this search. We go away and find all the, the links for you uh, in real time and bring them back to you. Um, it takes about a minute to run. Whilst that's doing that, I'll show you one that I've just prepared for you. So I did a, a backlink search for buzzsumo.com. And we have a number of filters here. So this is just links to the domain. I could have chosen to a specific page, but I'm doing links to the domain. And I'm showing all results. So every article that links to uh, Buzzsumo. And so we can see there are 1,759 here that link to Buzzsumo. And the links are organized by the number of times that piece of content was shared. So this article on Social Media Examiner links to us. It's great that uh, Cinder's recommended us. Um, and it was shared over 10,000 times. So it's ranking at the top. Interestingly, you can see that the second most shared article that linked to us was also from Social Media Examiner, another article by, by Cindy. Now, you might not always want to see every um, uh, link from a domain. So you could switch the all results to one result per domain. And then what you would see is something like this. Um, this is a result for Buzzsumo on one result per domain. And you can see this time, we can see the top article on Social Media Examiner linking to Buzzsumo. And we can view 11 more links from Social Media Examiner if we want, but we've just hidden them for now uh, because we can see the next uh, key site that linked to us was, was Buffer then Huffington Post, moz.com, inc.com. And the way we've organized them, which I think is fairly unique, is by the number of times that article was shared, not necessarily by the authority of the domain itself. But again, you can also see the uh, authors. You can click the author's name to see their most shared content as well if you want to do that. And so all of this backlink data is exportable. You can export all of this uh, into a spreadsheet or CSV. And the summary here is just showing you that whilst there were those 1,700 links, um, they came from 927 different root domains. Another nice feature, I think, about the backlinks is you can filter it by date. So you could say, look, let's just have a look in the last week. Um, so what new links did Buzzsumo acquire in the last week? Uh, I haven't run this before, so I'm hoping we've acquired a number. Um, so in the last week, it's come back and said, we acquired 64 new links uh, from 64 different domains uh, this week. And that may be useful if you want to see if your competitors starting to gain a lot of traction, where are they getting their links from? So, and where was the most shared content? So here actually, 
one of the key links to us this week was from Mobilized um, on Twitter marketing tips, and that got over 2,000 shares. And one from sap.com that linked to us, for example, Search Engine Journal. So we could go down and see just for a very specific time period when were those new links acquired um, and who's linking. And as before, you can export all of this data. So when you do a domain search, you'll get both a content, so it's just a one article we published in the last week, um, you can get a content tab and a backlinks tab. And so I think in terms of looking at who's amplifying your competitor's content, it's good to look at backlinks and to view sharers. So they're two good ways of uh, seeing who's amplifying uh, your competitor content so you can see uh, how well they're doing. You can obviously do this for your own content uh, as well. Um, the influencers tab is less for competitors really, but you could search for um, competitor staff, for example, um, using the influencer search. Normally you'd search for a topic and find influencers. So uh, here I'm finding um, uh, a range of people who private equity at McKinsey, senior partner at McKinsey, for example. Um, so it can be a useful way sometimes if you're searching for influencers or people with inside an organization and you can then refilter so that you may find somebody it may be they only have 300 followers but maybe they're quite a good person to get in touch with they have a good uh, average number of retweets for example or they've got a reasonably high reply ratio so this person does have quite a high reply ratio so i might want to engage with this person um, you can also filter this list further so if i want to just find the um, people at mckinsey in chicago um, I can find a list of people based in Chicago, so a senior partner here, partner working on cloud and big data, for example. Obviously, you can do some similar things using your, your LinkedIn resources, um, just showing you how you could use an influencer search if you wanted to start looking for some people to connect with inside an organization. The next thing I wanted to look at um, is content alerts, which is really one of my favorite features of BuzzSumo. If you want to track competitors, content alerts are a really powerful way to do that. And I'll just show you three content alerts which, which really matter. One is a keyword alert. So you can simply put their brand name into BuzzSumo and we will search title, top, and article text and tell you when we find it. If it's a common name, you might just want to search title and topic. You can get your results in real time or as a daily digest. Um, I was often paranoid, I quite like to get mine in, in real time, but you can get them as a daily digest and choose your time. Uh, you can choose the language you want the alerts to come in. So what content are we searching? Just specific language content. You can set a minimum number of shares, so don't send me everything that they, um, every time they get mentioned. But give me an alert every time they're mentioned and, and the content shared more than 20 times and send it to my email address or it could be to my colleague's email address. So the first uh, alert is just a keyword alert and we're crawling content on the web all of the time. And as soon as we find it, we'll ping you an email, we'll send it to your dashboard. And I'll just click behind to show you the dashboard. This is my dashboard for my alerts for Basumo. You can see I've set it for minimum shares because I'm paranoid. I quite like to see any time somebody mentions us. Um, and you can see that this article was published six minutes ago this article was published 30 minutes ago, uh, one hour ago, one hour ago, for example. And what we're showing you here is fairly much what you get in the email. You get the title of the article that was published, the site it was published on, uh, the author's name, and a little snippet to see the context in which they've mentioned you. And that's useful because you might want to then look at it in more detail. You might want to thank them. You might want to, to retweet it. So everything comes into your dashboard here. The second alert for tracking competitors, which is really useful, is a domain alert. Um, this is very straightforward. This time I would type in basumo.com. Every time basumo.com publishes a new piece of content, 